Good morning. Welcome to Newswire on Sports Grid. Craig Mish back with you here following the end of the college football season. Great to be back with you here on the show on this Tuesday. Coming up in just a few minutes, Jacob Kamaker dives into the latest in the National Football League. We've got Matthew Waters back in the house from Legal Sports Report. And our buddy Brady Cannon also weighs in on some of the upcoming lines in the National Football League and also the Sony Open on the PGA Tour coming this weekend as well. So those are just some of the things that we have planned for you here on the show today. And also some news, of course, from the National Football League yesterday. Also some news around the basketball court as well as soccer as well. So stay with us here on the show. For those of you watching for the first time, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern, right here on Sports Grid, our free streaming network, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Let's get started with the National Football Champ College Football Championship game last night. A little bit of a dud, let's be honest. Uh, this was w within a score for the majority of the second half until the Michigan Wolverines pulled away. Lots of penalties for Washington, lots of missteps for their offense. It was kind of like Michigan like sort of let them stay in the game for a long period of time. And then J.J. McCarthy made some plays down the stretch. The final was 34-13, to 13, so Michigan does cover the five or five and a half, four and a half, depending on when you bet it. Also, this game went under the total. And Michigan very clearly will be the favorite to win the college football championship next year. But will that include Jim Harbaugh still to be determined as to whether or not Harbaugh's had his time over in college football? Or does he decide to run it back with the Wolverines next year? We will see. Okay, the tough story and tough situation for John Morant gets a little bit tougher. Of course, he was suspended for a while at the start of the season. And now he's got a torn labrum in his shoulder. The Memphis Grizzlies put this out last night saying he's going to have season ending surgery my goodness as jaws out for the year he played just nine games after coming back for suspension obviously playing well but this injury definitely sets memphis back looks like this is a team that's going to be headed toward the lottery here in the 19 in the 2023-24 season memphis just struggling without john moran for the most part now not going to have him for the rest of the year maybe time to take a step back for them okay uh let's get this quick story out here this was broken about 30 minutes ago and unfortunate news for the owner of the indianapolis colts jim ursay he's being treated right now for a respiratory illness and they're calling it severe and it looks like he's not going to be with his team this week in los angeles but he is receiving excellent care and uh, the team said that they wish him well, uh, certainly in his recovery, but naturally don't want to see this as we start the morning. Jim Mercer, owner of the Colts with a severe respiratory illness. Okay, now yesterday after the show was over, we anticipated some more changes happening in the National Football League, and we did get a bunch of them. The Jacksonville Jaguars wasted no time on this debacle at the end of their season. They fired their defensive coordinator, Mike Caldwell, and also other defensive assistants. They just fell apart completely down the stretch, including that game against Tennessee. Wink Martindale, remember him? How much the Giants wanted him to be their defensive coordinator as he left the Baltimore Ravens? Well, he resigned as the Giants defensive coordinator, so Brian Dable will be looking to hire someone else. The Miami Dolphins injury list gets a little bit longer. It's already pretty long. Andrew Van Ginkle, their linebacker. Jerome Baker also out for the remainder of the playoffs. So Van Ginkle could potentially return, but uh, Baker had surgery. He's going to be out for the rest of the season. They're already missing Chubb and uh, Xavier Howard. A lot of defensive injuries. Miami's at Kansas City this week. And by the way, if you're planning on watching that game, it's only going to be televised on the Peacock Network, folks, on Saturday night. Now, I know there's still going to be a lot of you that are out there that are like, wait a second, where do I find the game? How do I watch it? I am telling you now, if you do not have the app and you do not uh, sign up for a subscription, if I'm not mistaken, I, I, I think you can do a month, but you have to pay something to be able to watch this game. And those of you who are watching the show, you're probably streaming on some TV anyway. You could just download the app and watch it, but I'm just letting you know in advance. Also, I've been doing some investigating. It does seem like Peacock does come for free with some different operators, so you may want to look into that. Now, naturally, we have you covered on Saturday night. We can't broadcast the game, but we'll be doing all of our work investigating the point spread and doing in-game live for those games coming up this weekend. But that game in particular, not going to be on NBC or anywhere locally as well. Okay, I mentioned Michigan. They are 10-1 to 1 to win the national championship next season. It is actually Georgia that's opened up as the betting favorite. They're plus 350 on FanDuel, followed by Alabama, plus 550, Ohio State, 7.5 to 1. And Texas moving over the Southeastern Conference, they are plus 850. Alabama's defensive coordinator, Kevin Steele, has decided to retire. He coached for 40 years, including 13 in the SEC. 
Quinshin Judkins, former Ole Miss running back, is transferring over to Ohio State. Great running back with the Rebels there in the SEC. And college football playoffs and ESPN are discussing a six-year rights contract. Naturally, whoever gets this contract is going to be paying millions and millions of dollars, if not more. In other sports headlines, we have Tiger Woods saying goodbye to the swoosh late yesterday, ending a 27-year partnership with Miami. When you kind of think of Tiger Woods, you always think of Nike. Well, no more. Woods says there's more to come on this. What? I have no idea. But uh, this partnership definitely worked for both sides, I think it's fair to say. Inter-Miami getting ready to start their season. He, uh, they've signed Julian Gressel, free agent. He's won the MLS Cup twice. A lot of players still s- trying to sign on with Messi in Miami. And Inter-Miami does secure Julian Gressel services for next season. Speaking of which, the very popular Pop-Tarts Bowl. They got a lot of great marketing off of this with the players eating that big Pop-Tart at the end of the game. It's going to be back for next year. Of course, who's in the game, we still have no idea, but it's an edible mascot, uh, which which makes it kind of cool. And the Toronto Maple Leafs and William Nylander have agreed to an eight-year, $92 million contract. It is the largest contract in Maple Leafs franchise history. Uh, it's an AAV of $11.5 million. So that's the very latest in the National uh, Hockey League as well. Uh, Let's get over to some NBA headlines as well. Tyrese Halliburton, another injury in the NBA. He's going to have an MRI on his hamstring today. He left Monday night's 133-131 home win over Boston in the second quarter. Boy, this would be a huge story if he's out for any extended period of time. We just don't know right now. Could be a day, could be a month, who knows? Draymond Green says Adam Silver talked him out of retirement. Draymond's been off the court with another issue in terms of injury. Not the same Uh, This time, it's more of like a disciplinary type thing, and he's not hurt. He just basically can't get himself straight. But either way, Adam Silver says he's back. Uh, The Bucs lose last night without Damian Lillard to the Utah Jazz, 132 to 116. And in college basketball, Mikey Williams is entering the transfer portal. He had yet to play a single game for the Tigers. That's the latest in college basketball as well. We'll keep an eye on this Tyrese Halliburton story. Naturally, a guy who's had a fantastic start to his season. NBA could potentially be losing two of their young superstars here in 2024 with John Morant being out for the year and hopefully not Tyrese Halliburton. All right, coming up next, it's time to take a look at some of the lines in the National Football League. We'll go over all of the playoff games, so make sure you stay with us here on Sports Grid as Jacob Kamaker joins us here on the show. We'll talk Rams, Lions, Dolphins, Chiefs, Packers, Cowboys, and Steelers, Bills. That's up next right here on Newswire, where it's smarter to be on Sports Grid. And we'll be back right after this. Don't go away. kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote so you're talking about an mvp award uh cy young uh, rookie of the year anything where somebody where people at the end of the year have to vote newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Fan. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The wife said we're getting the Stanley Cups, and now they got Stanley Cups in West Virginia. Yep. They're doing $300 million gross a year in sales. Listen, man, we don't need that much, man. They're crushing it. a little piece of the Stanley Cup. I would drink from the Stanley Cup every day. I'll have inscribed on there. <laughs> BV, we'll, get, we'll get our BVB inscribed. Yeah. Stanley Cups. The Bostonian versus the book. That tells you 
how good this league is. Jeff, you're mine. Big 12, who's the team to beat? Well, it's always Kansas. I don't care who comes in the league. Uh, and I love Kelvin Sampson, what he's done in Houston. I don't care. So Marquette, to me, is the best backcourt in the country. Tyler Cole is the best point guard. Cam Jones is an elite scorer who just plays with, with such a good pace, and he's so smart. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. San Francisco, minus 120 to win the NFC Championship. It's the Cowboys with the second best number. The Eagles at 7-1. What the hell's the difference between the 6th and the 7th seed? I need my guys out here to make a playoff push. They took the bye week and still won the football game. You want to talk about two franchises going in the wrong direction? The Eagles. Ridiculous what they did this week. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Yay, congratulations. But the game was over at that point. So another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a 10 point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. I have a feeling we'll be talking a lot about Super Wild Card Weekend this week. We did yesterday. We're going to do a lot of it today. We're going to do it tomorrow, and we'll roll with it. Jacob Kamaker is getting ready for this over at SportingNews.com. I may be too early in the week for Jacob to make some of these predictions. I, I think, Jacob, we have a feel for some of these games, but there, there are some weather implications, and so it just kind of depends on how you feel on Tuesday versus, let's say, Saturday or Sunday. I know there's a game Monday night, too. That's not going to have a weather implication, but... Uh, I, I feel like uh, in these games and looking at them and looking at the spreads, I feel like we're going to probably get one or two like massive upsets. Well, maybe not massive. I mean, spreads aren't that high. Uh, and, and then we're going to get a couple blowouts, I feel. But generally speaking, Jacob, if, if, I'm, if history is correct, and I'm thinking this through correctly, is that this weekend is like an upset weekend, a super wildcard weekend, and then things sort of stabilize the rest of the way. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You see a lot of these... Lower seeded teams, these six and seven seeds. We haven't seen a seven seed win yet, but we've seen some of these close games between them. Um, five and six seeds win often enough that, you know, these teams have to be on guard for them. I believe the last couple of years, the Cowboys have lost in the first round. So, you know, you always have to be a little wary of them. They're going to be playing the Packers this week. Uh, they're big favorites over the Packers, more than the touchdown, but. You know, Green Bay has been kind of one of those pesky teams where when they are hot, they are very hard to stop on offense. Now, we don't know which version of Jordan Love will show up, but if it's the one that's been out there for the past three weeks, you can see an upset in that game. You got the Rams and Lions. That game's looking like it could be a tight one. And just lots of good teams on both sides of the bracket. And without many real elite teams, you could definitely see some upsets this weekend. Yeah, so so let's get started, and, and I guess we're going to kind of go all around the board here. Uh, Monday night, we'll start there with the game that has no weather factor. So, Jacob, I think you kind of can make a, a pick or an opinion on this one. I don't think there's going to be much change. There's no injury issues. The Lions are three-and-a-half-point favorites. The total is 51-and-a-half against uh, the Rams. Now, the Lions, to me, Jacob, are really interesting because I feel like at home against any team in the NFL – they they win and they and they usually win by a lot. It's when they go on the road that they have these sort of hiccups. Um, I, I'm not positive. I'm 100 percent in on the Rams. I know they're the hot team. Some people are calling for this upset here, but like I, I think of all the teams that have made the playoffs and the seedings. In my opinion, Jacob, I, I do have the Rams near the bottom of those teams that have gotten in. Maybe not all the way at the bottom. There's a couple others, but I'm curious what your uh, thoughts are here and and I don't buy any of this motivation of this guy's going home and this guy's playing against his old team I mean everybody's got motivation going into these games right right and if you were to make the motivation argument a lot of people are saying oh it's a Matthew Stafford revenge game I don't think that's the case I think if anything it's more revenge for Jared Goff who was kind of cast aside in that trade and like 
view it as, oh, he's a throw-in. Oh, why are the Lions taking him? He's bad. So I agree with you on that front. I will say this. I've been a staunch backer of the Lions this year. I think that there's a pretty good chance that they could go on a run if they win this game. I think they're probably one of the top challengers to the 49ers in the NFC. And I think there's a chance that the winner of this game ends up being the top challenger in the NFC to the 49ers. I'm a bit higher on the Rams than you are. I believe they've been averaging 28.5 points per game when both Kyron Williams and Cooper Cup are healthier and in the lineup. So I think that their offense can be trusted, which isn't a good recipe for this Detroit defense. But where I'm settling on this game right now, I think the Lions pull out a tight offensive battle. So I'm going to be taking the Rams against the spread at plus three and a half. I just think that value is too good in a game that should be possibly decided by a field goal. But I do like the Lions to advance, and I'm going to be having them advance in my playoff bracket, and hopefully they can get to that NFC Championship game against the 49ers because I think they are the best matchup for the 49ers because their strong offensive line might be able to slow down that San Francisco pass rush and allow Amon Ross St. Brown and Jared Goff to take advantage of the weakness that is the San Francisco cornerback play. Yeah, I think you and I are going to go head to head on some games because I am going to. I think I'm going to take the Lions. This may be the only favorite I take all weekend long, as far as an opinion is concerned. And I wouldn't be silly enough to get down on all these games, but I don't know. I think the Lions are going to advance here. Uh, so we're probably going to see this one on the opposite end of it because I am the ultimate uh, low buyer <laughs> in professional and college sports. I love buying low. And when this line opened up, Jacob, it really took me by surprise. And I think it told me the story going into this game. Now, this is one where I need to see what the exact weather conditions are going to be going into Saturday night. But I, I got to tell you, the Bills did not look good against the Dolphins, Jacob. The Chiefs have not looked good all season long. And if I can catch three and a half, four points – in this game where the Chiefs have just not looked good all season long, I, I think the Chiefs can win, but I think Miami is going to give them all that they can handle. I, I think a bounce back is coming here. Maybe I'm the crazy one here to think this, but in sports, Jacob, we get so caught up in being prisoner of the moment, just remembering the last thing that we saw, and that's when I want to buy on a team. So I am buying on Miami. Your theory makes some sense to me, but I am going to be on the opposite side of this one with Kansas City. And it's a myriad of factors contributing to it. I do think that the line, under normal circumstances, if the Dolphins were fully healthy, I'd probably side with you on that line. But they're missing so many pass rushers now uh, with Bradley Chubb, Jalen Phillips. Now Andrew Van Ginkle's gone down. Jerome Baker's gone down. So their defense is really banged up. So I think they might have a tougher time slowing down the Chiefs, which should allow the Chiefs to put up a modest amount of points. The main concern I have, though, is Tua Tagovailoa against playoff caliber teams this year. It's not just him. It's the Dolphins in general. But the Dolphins are 1-5 in five against teams to make the playoffs. Their only win was that two-point win over the Cowboys. And normally I wouldn't put a ton of stock into this, but the manner in which they've been defeated in these games has been noticeable. They're averaging twenty about 20 fewer points per game uh, against uh, playoff teams compared to non-playoff teams. Granted, they had 70 against the Broncos, so that's skewing it a bit, but it's still not skewing it that that much. And Tua Tagovailoa against non-playoff teams has a pass rating about 110. Against playoff teams, it drops to around 84. So I just haven't seen that the Dolphins against these higher caliber defenses can consistently get the job done on offense. Now, they have the speed and weapons on that side of the ball to keep games close. I won't deny that. But I think if Kansas City shows up in this one and they really get pressure on Tua and bother him, I could see them maybe keeping this, uh, keeping the Dolphins at an arm's length and maybe turning this into something of a 24 to 14 type game. So that's where I see this going right now. But I definitely understand why you want to buy low on the Dolphins. Like they're, you're not going to get lower stock on them after how they started the year and where they finished it. I like the battle for us, though, going head-to-head -head on these games. Uh, okay, so now I don't think this is going to seven. Dallas is seven and a half. It's pretty solid on FanDuel right now, so I feel like this is where the line's going to be at come Sunday. You're going to have to lay more than a touchdown. The total is four, uh, 50 and a half. The Packers took care of the Bears last week. They didn't look particularly great in that game. Dallas has been the best home team in the National Football League. But again, they got to win by more than a touchdown, Jacob. Do you like any position here? I really haven't come with a strong opinion on this one yet. 
Yeah, I think I would lean on the Packers here just because that's a high number for the Cowboys to cover. I know they've run away with games at home at times this year, but I think that the Packers are going to be live and motivated for this one. Jordan Love's kind of been an underdog all year. Uh, People gave up on him at the midpoint of the season when they went through a cold stretch, and now he's led the team to the playoffs. So I just think that number is a little high for me, and I think the possibility of a backdoor cover would also exist here uh, because if the Cowboys all of a sudden are up 14 late and Jordan Love has the ball, and they just kind of let the clock run down and love score, then all of a sudden you don't cover. So I'm probably going to side with the Packers here. I doubt they beat the Cowboys, but, hey, we've seen Mike McCarthy teams choke in the playoffs before, so nothing would surprise me on that end. All right, let's uh, end it real quick, if we can, here. Bills minus 10 against the Steelers, lowest total on the board in a playoff game of 35 and a half, Jacob bills have looked horrible all season. How are they 10 point favorites in any game in the NFL? I don't get it. Wait, do you see the Steelers without TJ Watt? Then you'll be wondering how they made the playoffs. So we'll be back at the side of the bills here. All right. We'll be right back. Thanks, Jacob. Thank you. to do because you could kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote so you're talking about an mvp award uh, a cy young a rookie of the year anything where somebody where people at the end of the year have to vote newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Fan. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The wife said we're getting the Stanley Cup, so now they got Stanley Cups in West Virginia. Yep. They're doing three hundred million gross a year in sales. Listen, man, we don't need that much, man. They're crushing it. A little piece of the Stanley Cup. I would drink from the Stanley Cup every day. I'll have inscribed on there. <laughs> BV, we'll get we'll get our BVB inscribed. Yeah. Stanley Cups. The Bostonian versus the book. That tells you how good this league is. Jeff, you're mine. Big 12, who's the team to beat? Well, it's always Kansas. I don't care who comes in the league. Uh, and I love Kelvin Sampson, what he's done in Houston. I don't care. So Marquette, to me, is the best backcourt in the country. Tyler Cole is the best point guard. Cam Jones is an elite scorer who just plays with, with such a good pace, and he's so smart. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. San Francisco minus 120 to win the NFC Championship. It's the Cowboys with the second best number. The Eagles at 7-1. to one. What the hell's the difference between the 6th and the 7th seed? I need my guys healthier to make a playoff push. They took the bye week and still won the football game. You want to talk about two franchises going in the wrong direction? The Eagles. Ridiculous what they did this week. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Yay, congratulations, but the game was over at that point, so another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a ten-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In-game live, prime time, only on SportsGrid. SportsGrid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on SportsGrid.
Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. We're joined once again today. Our guest contributor from Legal Sports Report is Matthew Waters. Back-to-back appearances, double the pay, I guess, for <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> double the double the thanks. No question about that. Matthew, hope you had a great Monday. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always happy to be here. All right, so let's get started here with uh, Bet365, uh, an intriguing sports betting company that I feel like we don't talk enough about. And, you know, certainly all of the sports betting companies and operators are hanging in there, making money. Bet365, maybe not the kind of uh, revenue that some of the other sports books are making, but it looks like this transition from outside of the United States into the United States is having at least some marginal success. Yeah, I I would say so. Look, um, Bet365 released their earnings. Now, they're a private company. And so this report that came out actually only takes us from basically – April 22 through March of 23. So we're not looking at the bulk of what Bet365 has done this year, which is come in the football season, right? But they look at, uh, they said they had a 15% increase in uh, sports betting revenue and their total revenue hit 4.3 billion for the year, Craig. So Bet365 is obviously just a huge company that we knew was going to be we knew that they could do something in the U S if they chose to do so. And it was looking like they were not choosing to do so for a while now. And, and then now we get an, another, you know, genius move by bet three, six, five, everybody else is pulling back on promotions and kind of taking it easy. And now bet three, six, five is coming in and saying, okay, you know, this is our time to go. They spent heavily last year in this 2023 financial year, Craig, they attributed um, 122.5 million increase of direct cost to that, um, you know, that growth in revenue. So that's mostly U.S. based, and they had a total cash burn of 850 million. Now, again, they're doing a lot of things. They're improving their live casino product in the U.K. They are um, obviously still improving their their products all around the all around the world, honestly. But the U.S. is one of the main areas that they're focusing on now for that growth and we're starting to see it we saw it in the in the football season obviously you know you have uh for november in ohio that 365 ranked as fifth highest in terms of handle and that is probably um a little noisy because if you remember espn bet came in and they did like 70 million in handle but they also did about 30 million in promos so uh, you know we've been talking a lot about fanatics and ESPN bet and talking a lot about, you know, the, the lead that DraftKings and FanDuel have and, you know, what are the casino companies going to do with bet MGM and Caesars, but bet three, six, five out here. I, look, they have more than $2 billion on the balance sheet. Um, they are not afraid to spend money and they can make a move whenever they want to, they can really come out. They could start carpet bombing the market with promotions that they wanted to, they could make this, upcoming March Madness uh, season, just they could own it if they wanted to. I don't think they will. I think they're obviously going to take a more um, judicious pro- approach to spending their money, but they could. And I'm not going to be surprised if we start to see Bet365 really starting to make a move, um, especially if we start to see more iGaming getting legalized mm-hmm. around the country as well. We all know that sports betting will bring the customers in. iGaming is where you truly make the money. Um, So really encouraging report from Bet365. You know, they they wound up with a loss for the the year, and they had profited the year before. But at this point, you know, they they called it out in their earnings. They just said, you know, we're entering new markets, high initial investment, but we think it's going to work. So we're going to keep watching Bet365. I'm I'm ready to see some make the major moves, though. Yeah, and, and generally speaking, before uh, sports betting was legal here in the states, Bet three six five had really good customer reviews internationally. So I am curious to see, uh, you know, how they kind of find their way here in the United States and continue to do that. Uh, okay, let's go over to Massachusetts. I remember it was probably about a year ago we were talking about the rise of of this of some of the other companies, not named FanDuel, DraftKings, MGM. Uh, Betway was one of them. But what has happened here? Because we spent so much time talking about them and they're not even going to be in Massachusetts. Matthew, what happened here? Yeah, Betway is a company that has kind of, um, I I, I honestly am not sure what their approach is in the U.S., Craig, because they're live in a bunch of states, right? They're live in nine states. 
um, and they're live in key states. They're live in Jersey, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Virginia. Um, and I, I just don't know if now they're looking at the Massachusetts market and they say uh, there's, there's no point. It's dominated by DraftKings, right? DraftKings is this Boston-based right. company. They came out with a huge, you know, bet with your local bookie kind of uh, promo push when Massachusetts launched. And um, it just doesn't, it's not a very appealing market to jump into, honestly, right now, if you are one of those smaller companies. And again, Betway, they are owned by a, a, a publicly traded company, Digital Gaming Corporation. They, um, you know, they have money behind them. Supergroup has money behind them. And they can do something more, but they've gone live in these states and they've always just been a smaller player. Um, so you have to wonder if Betway is going to be one of those brands that exits in 2024, is bought in 2024. Um, you know, they, they certainly are not making the splash that I think they thought they were going to have. And this isn't the first market where they pulled out, Craig, before they even launched. If you remember, they won a license in Illinois, a $20 million license for mobile only sports betting. They were the only company that was approved for it. And then they said, no, thank you. So uh, that way is a little bit of a, a question mark right now, to say the least. What I also found interesting from the story that our, our Mike Nazio wrote is that Ballybet still says that it intends to launch in Massachusetts. And that is a bit of a head scratcher for me. Um, Ballybet has not been going out to spend heavily. Um, they spent billions, literal billions of dollars on their digital gaming product only to scrap most of it and write off a huge amount of it as a loss. And now they're working with Canby, a third party operator who, you know, Canby partners with the sports books who are maybe not looking to be the biggest and baddest sports books out there because right. the product is going to be the same across multiple brands, right? But so Ballybet saying that they still want into Massachusetts is interesting. You do have to look at Rhode Island. They are going to be the only online casino operator in Rhode Island. So are they hoping that if they're in Massachusetts, can they send out some promos? Can they get some people over to Rhode Island using their product? Uh, they, they own the retail casinos in Rhode Island as well. Um, I have to assume that is what they're thinking. I just don't know how that is truly going to pay off for them. But uh, one thing's for sure, I'm not surprised that Betway does not want to come into Massachusetts at this point. Um, you know, a, a lot of the brands there are doing well, but DraftKings right. is just absolutely dominating it. Yeah. And, you know, the other part of this, too, is that these these sportsbook operators, if they don't jump in immediately, they lose so much ground. I mean, that's what we're finding in some of these states. And so First it does make so sense. Important. Yeah. It, it really it really is the case with this. You want to get those people to get your promos first, you know, and that, yeah. you know, jumping in new, people are already using another sports book. So it does make sense. Uh, going back to Canby for a minute, chief executive told the board of directors that he is stepping down. Uh, Canby a little bit different in terms of how they operate. But uh, wh why did this happen, you think? Is this just, uh, you know, a change in direction? Was there something else behind this? I don't think there's anything else behind this. Canby is... They aren't a sports book, right? They provide the sports book technology right. to operators. So they're more of the, the backbone of a sports book than anything else. And look, they do great international business. They used to be owned by a company called Unibet. They spun off from them in 2010. And uh, Christian Nyland has been there the entire way. He's been leading the ship. And honestly, he said, look, he just wants to spend more time with his family. I think we can all appreciate that. He is joining the board and he, he's excited to focus on more um, strategic points of the company. And I, I think that is important because Camby, Camby was a, a bright star in 2018 when PASPA fell and all these companies were like, okay, let's get started with sports betting. Who knows how to do that? And Camby was right there with their hand up like us, you know, let, let's, let's do it. They partnered with a bunch of companies. But, you know, DraftKings moved away from them. They bought their own technology. Penn moved away from them. They bought their own technology. For the larger guys at scale, it just makes more sense to own your own technology because those revenue share payments, 
those deals can be, they're going to get expensive once you start to get to scale. And so we still have Canby being used by, like I said, BallyBet. They are still used by Bet Rivers, and Bet Rivers has had a, a huge surge in the fourth quarter. They've done really well. They improved their parlay products. So it's it's really interesting to see what Canby is doing now. They're going to have more of an international approach, I think. Uh, they they call out Latin America is a really really important market for them. I think uh, Christian is a smart guy, you know. His earnings calls, they had to explain what this company did for so many years. And he was patient. He took his time. He spoke to investors. And I think having a mind like that, that's able to focus on more granular topics instead of the whole company, I, I think that's going to be an overall win for Camby. Um, but, you know, we're, we're just going to have to see. Yeah, no, it, it is. And look. In the end, the sports betting operators need these kind of companies to survive as technology continues to evolve in a lot of different facets. Matthew, great stuff as always here on the show today. Have a great rest of your week. Maybe I'll see you again. Who knows? But thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks, sir. Take care. All right, Brady Cannon joins us next. Preview the NFL and the Sony Open in golf. Go ahead. kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote so you're talking about an mvp award uh cy young uh, rookie of the year anything where somebody where people at the end of the year have to vote newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Favorite. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The wife said we're getting the Stanley Cups, and now they got Stanley Cups in West Virginia. Yep. They're doing $300 million gross a year in sales. Listen, man, we don't need that much, man. They're crushing it. a little piece of the Stanley Cup. I would drink from the Stanley Cup every day. I'll have inscribed on there. <laughs> BV, we'll, get, we'll get our BVB inscribed. Yeah. Stanley Cups. The Bostonian versus the book. That tells you how good this league is. Jeff, you're mine. Big 12, who's the team to beat? Well, it's always Kansas. I don't care who comes in the league. Uh, and I love Kelvin Sampson, what he's done in Houston. I don't care. So Marquette, to me, has the best backcourt in the country. Tyler Cole is the best point guard. Cam Jones is an elite scorer who just plays with, with such a good pace, and he's so smart. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. San Francisco, minus 120 to win the NFC Championship. It's the Cowboys with the second best number. The Eagles at 7-1. What the hell's the difference between the 6th and the 7th seed? I need my guys healthier to make a playoff push. They took the bye week and still won the football game. You want to talk about two franchises going in the wrong direction? The Eagles, ridiculous what they did this week. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Yay, congratulations, but the game was over at that point, so another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a ten-point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In-game live, prime time, only on SportsGrid. SportsGrid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on SportsGrid.
right, welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. Before we get to the Sony Open coming up this weekend, let's get to some NFL. Brady Cannon has just finished off another year in the National Football League, handicapping this, 18 weeks, power rankings, contest plays. And Brady, it's so much fun, man. It's it's sort of sad that we get to this point in the end of the season, but now we have new life. We have a month more of games that really matter a lot. But I guess from your perspective, I guess we could start here, is that I find the NFL playoffs – as far as handicapping this stuff, more of an opinion than anything else. Because let's be honest, the lines are sharp. They're not moving. They're tight. They open up. They're pretty much what they are. And it's just two teams. Whoever has the best day wins. It's very cliche. But, like, saying that this team is motivated or traveling or, like, I mean, the edges are so thin, I would say, at this point. Uh, To me, it's more about guessing right than anything else. I don't know if you see it the same way. I, I think it's a great opinion, Craig. I mean, you just look at my power ratings, what I came up with this week. They're all basically within a half point of what the uh, the actual line is, if not the same line. So, you know, it, I mean, that gives me a little bit of confidence. I'm thinking along the same lines as the bookmakers are. But you're right. These lines are incredibly tight at this point. You've had 18 weeks. Call it 17 weeks because week 18 doesn't count for a lot of teams. But 17 weeks surely to evaluate these teams and put together the right number. And, you know, it looks like the odds maker, according to what I've put together, it looks like the odds maker is pretty spot on once again this week. So you're right. I mean, you have to dig pretty deep to find any real edges. There's not scheduling spots necessarily anymore. Um, You're you're right. It's a lot of, let's say, qualitative versus quantitative at this point. People on social media saying, I told you, and I'm going to say, you told me what? Like, it's the playoffs, you know? Like, anybody could beat anybody. <laughs> uh, l- let's start off with the game. I- I'm not surprised at this line at all. I, I thought if if the odds makers made Houston a favorite against Cleveland, all the money would come in on Cleveland. It still may come in, but this this number feels right. Can't make the Browns three, but you you have to make them a favorite in Houston. I mean, Cleveland's been the better team all season long. Total is 44 and a half. Brady, from your perspective, is is this accurate in terms of our thinking where Cleveland goes through an entire season having the best defense, not much of offense. They add Joe Flacco to the mix. Let's keep it real. Flacco has played out of his mind, but also throwing a lot of picks, like throwing the ball up there. Like, is that going to work in the playoffs? It did for him when he was with Baltimore several years ago, but he had an incredible defense with him. Uh, Great running backs, great talent around him as well, which he doesn't have. Houston's the fun story of the year. So I feel like a lot of people are going to want Houston to win, but do you think that that's the right side? You were on Cleveland from the very beginning this year. I will say that. Yeah, and I'm going to have to hedge a little bit. You know, I've got that futures ticket on Cleveland to win the AFC, and I think they have a shot, an outside shot certainly, Uh, but I'll probably hedge a little bit here because I do think Houston has a good shot to win this game. I I think this game is interesting for a lot of reasons. Um, This was the one contest where my power rating was pretty different than what the odds makers threw up. Now, I think you make good points there. You, You probably have to make Cleveland the favorite. You probably can't make it quite a field goal, even though there are some threes in the market as we speak. Um, I actually made Houston a one point favorite. And then when I run the numbers, I come out with Houston as just slightly less than a one point favorite. Now the Cleveland Browns, I don't count week 18. If you don't count week 18, they've played three out of their last four games at home. And we know the Cleveland Browns are a big difference between what they are at home and versus what they were are on the road. Now that one road game that they played was a win over these Houston Texans, but C.J. Stroud did not play in that game. Um, The strengths and weaknesses of the offense are kind of interesting here. The uh, Cleveland Browns have not run the ball very well all season, and they'll be facing a very stout Houston run defense. Houston doesn't run the – I mean, they're, they're about average running the ball, but they're facing a pretty weak run defense in the Cleveland Browns. But at the same time, one of the best pass defenses in the league and the Browns offense will be facing a below average pass defense in Houston. So, you know, you look for Joe Flacco and company to probably be throwing the ball and the Houston Texans will probably be wise to run the ball. Um, I I make uh, Houston just a slight edge in this game, but I think the best bet you can make, I, I believe 
And I think we see this oftentimes in the playoffs too, Craig. A lot of these spreads this week are pretty close. Three, three and a half, two, two and a half. I, I think this game will be pretty tight um, because, you know, you have a good defense versus a good offense. Browns not with a great offense versus a good run defense. There, there's a lot of conflicting factors here that say no team's going to run away with this game. And so for that reason, I feel the best bet that you can probably make right now is taking the Texans on a teaser up to plus eight and a half. I think that's pretty a pretty comfortable spot right there. And I think they have a shot to win the game outright. I typically don't play a team on a teaser if I don't think they can win against the traditional spread or even outright. And I think Houston can win outright here. But getting eight and a half, I, I like that position for sure. Position with Dallas, that, that would be the... I think that mm-hmm. the, at least if, if that line doesn't go under seven and a half, I think that's probably the way to go. Okay, so the next game I had Jacob Kamaker on the show earlier from Sporting News, Brady. Call me crazy. Call me the crazy one. But I'm riding with the Dolphins this week. I don't know, wow. man. I've seen this story. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen this story before. Uh, Sam, our producer, would tell you I'm not biased. Everyone's watching thinking, oh, Craig lives in South Florida. That's why. That is not the case. Come on. Anybody who's watched the show would tell you that when it comes to the NFL, I call it very fair. I'm not a fan. I'm just calling it as it is. Brady, I'm a buy low guy in in sports. I I think when when the team hits the bottom, that's when I want to go in. I'm going to, you know, Philadelphia may be a little bit different for me this week, just because I don't, I I don't know what's going on there. Like they look just like cooked. Like I'm not sure, but I think Miami is as good or better than the chiefs. They played as good or better all season long. There's no question they're banged up. There's no question they're the most injured team right now going into the playoffs. You're telling me they can't cover three and a half or four? I, I'm going to wait till to see the weather here on this. If it's snowing, I may change my mind. But as long as it's just freezing with no snow, I think the Dolphins definitely have a chance to upset the Chiefs in Kansas City. I think you're right, Craig. I think they do. Uh, my power ratings come to Chiefs uh, minus three and a half, but when I uh, run the numbers, it comes to Chiefs minus two. Both of these teams have been struggling as of late, uh, and you could make a case that the Chiefs have been struggling for even longer than the Dolphins have. You're right. The Dolphins have a ton of injuries, and that's the general perception. And we have seen this number tick to four. There's still some three and a halves out there, but a lot of fours have popped this morning. I think there's a case where the public and the Sharps could be on Kansas City this week, as evidenced by the latest line movement. And and that could also be a head fake by the Sharps. We don't know just yet. Um, But I think the public will absolutely gravitate towards the Kansas City Chiefs because of the situation, the injuries for Miami, a warm weather Florida team going to play in single digit temperatures or or less, Uh, you know, and what they've been going through lately and the fact that, you know, they haven't quote unquote ever beaten a good team this year, except for the Dallas Cowboys. But I think you're right. If the Miami dolphins and Roheem Mostert is expected to be back this week, if they can just lean on this running game with Mostert and a Chan, that's a good way to get at this Kansas city defense, which is otherwise pretty darn good. And the Miami dolphins were really torching the Buffalo bills last week with that running game. But for some reason in the second half, they abandoned it. You know, some people forget the Dolphins were up by a touchdown at halftime. And I don't know why they got rid of that running game, but I think they are going to have to lean on that early and often and throughout this contest with Kansas City. And if they can do that, you know, sometimes, Craig, a simple handicap here or an element to your handicap is who's going to rush for more yards in the game. And that team will be your winner. I think you could guess right now that if Miami sticks to a game plan that I think will work, they're going to probably outrush Kansas City by a lot, and that could turn into a win. So, you know, I, I don't think Kansas City money line's a bad play. I don't think the Dolphins plus four is a bad play. I haven't done anything with this game yet, but I'm not going to say you're crazy. If Miami can run the ball down their throats, they can win this game. I, I'm going to guess at least 70% of the money comes in on Kansas City, and then down the street right. from you, Brady, they're going to build, they're going to build another hotel off that game that's my guess. <laughs> you're right i think so you should All be right, an so, investor uh, <laughs> it wouldn't go well uh okay so uh only time i'm gonna lay points i think this weekend is gonna be monday night lions against the rams i'm just not a huge rams guy i know they're playing well but i like detroit and and i and the total's 51 and a half and and i hate the fact there's a hook here 
But what am I going to do? Like, I, I just think the Lions at home have been playing great. I, I am aware some cr- crazy thing is going to happen this weekend. A lot of people are predicting the Rams to go to Detroit and win the game outright. This is just not one that I see. As I said, my crazy one maybe is Miami. But I certainly understand why you have to make the Rams a very uh, short favorite here. I, I just think that the Lions, outside of, what, two horrible road games, played much better football than the Rams did all season. But I get it. I understand why the line is what it is. Yeah, the Rams are kind of the hot team, maybe the hottest team down the stretch yeah. overall in the entire NFL. And, and I could see the public gravitating that way because Detroit has been a little bit shaky on defense. You know, I mean, they even gave up 20 points to the Vikings. And there's that whole narrative that, you know, Campbell played the starters and, you know, had some tough luck with a couple of injuries. I, I made the number three and a half. You know, there are some threes out there with a lot of juice, Craig. You don't necessarily have to lay the hook. I would say the number truly is about 3.25. Um, and I could get to three with my power ratings if Laporta and Brian Branch, the two outstanding Detroit rookies, are not able to go in this game. I think the two of them combined could be worth half a point. When I run the numbers, I come out to the Detroit Lions as about one and a half point favorite. But that's really reflective of probably the Detroit defense, which has not been the best all season long, really. And the uptick that we've seen out of the Los Angeles Rams for the last six weeks or so. Um, But I'm kind of with you. I I think Detroit finds a way to win this game. But if I had to play it just based on my numbers, I I think this is another close game. The, the, The odd thing here is. When you have a high total, this this total opened at 52, now down to about 51 and a half, a higher total speaks more volatility. So you could get Detroit winning by margin here. I have a feeling we're going to get another close game here. I think Detroit probably squeaks one out. Um, but if I had to bet it, uh, I, I might look at the Rams plus the three and a half. If you can still find that, there's probably plenty of them out there. Rams plus the three and a half and under the total. When you have these games that, you know, look on paper like it's two high flying offenses and and everybody's going to go, oh, this is going to be, you know, a bunch of fireworks. It tends to disappoint. So the under might be the best bet. And maybe, Craig, you've talked me into a a Detroit money line parlay. Maybe I do a money line parlay with Kansas City and Detroit. That looks kind of safe right now. You could certainly get a good price with both being, you know, three and a half point favorites roughly. Um, and I think uh, both of them probably win very tight contests. I, I think I think the Dolphins will be more competitive than people think, and and I think we're going to get what we expect out of the Rams and the Lions. It's going to be a hard fought, entertaining game, but I think it will stay under fifty one and a half. Do you have any pick on the Sony Open this week? I, I know all the main players aren't playing in this. We have twenty seconds left, Brady. Yeah, you know, I looked at a lot of guys that have done well at the correlated courses, Colonial Country Club, Harbor Town. I ended up on Emiliano Grillo, Svensson, Putnam, Brendan Todd, Brian Harmon, and Russell Henley. All right, we'll be right back. to do because you could kind of you know place a season-long bet all at once and just wait it out i've always found that interesting but uh new york is one state where it's a little bit unclear you cannot bet on basically anything that requires a vote so you're talking about an mvp award uh, a cy young a rookie of the year anything where somebody where people at the end of the year have to vote newswire only on sports grid Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Fan. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The wife said we're getting the Stanley Cups, and now they got Stanley Cups in West Virginia. Yep. They're doing 300 million gross a year in sales. 
kiss it, man. We don't need that much, man. They're crushing it. a little piece of the Stanley Cup. I would drink from the Stanley Cup every day. I'll have inscribed on there. <laughs> BV, we'll get we'll get our BVB inscribed. Yeah. Stanley Cups. The Bostonian versus the book. That tells you how good this league is. Jeff, your mind. Big 12. Who's the team to beat? Well, it's always Kansas. I don't care who comes in the league. Uh, and I love Kelvin Sampson, what he's done at Houston. I don't care. So Marquette, to me, is the best backcourt in the country. Tyler Cole is the best point guard. Cam Jones is an elite scorer who just plays with, with such a good pace, and he's so smart. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. San Francisco, minus 120 to win the NFC Championship. It's the Cowboys with the second best number. The Eagles at 7-1. What the hell's the difference between the 6 and the 7 seed? I need my guys out here to make a playoff push. They took the bye week and still won the football game. You want to talk about two franchises going in the wrong direction? The Eagles. Ridiculous what they did this week. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Yay, congratulations. But the game was over at that point. So another one of those terrible beats. If you had three and a half, four, even four and a half, this was a 10 point game uh, until the final closing seconds. In game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, the only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back to Newswire. It's really interesting that a few weeks ago, I uh, flew up to uh, New York, New Jersey, to see uh, all the fellas and women working at Sports Grid. And in one of the areas in New Jersey, we were driving by, which is where uh, one of the studios is in Bellworth, New Jersey. It reminded me a lot of the, the TV show, The Sopranos, right? So I thought this would be a good way to end it because it feels like it was like maybe some of the same area. Uh, HBO is celebrating their 25th anniversary of The Sopranos, and what they're doing just tells you the story of this world. Uh, 25 seconds, they're condensing the 30-minute episodes down to 25 seconds, and after uh, each day, they're going to release a new 25-second synopsis of The Sopranos to celebrate this on TikTok. So oh, each you. episode... I gotta start again. I gotta get my action back. Oh, just like that. Spend more time down at the brokerage. You're supposed to push with besties. You're not gonna believe this. Your sister's here. So how are things really with mom? You wanna play Florence Nightingale? That's your choice. When are you getting back into therapy? Don't yell. Don't scream. How many more people have to die for your personal growth? So, I, I, look, the, the episodes, generally speaking, I don't think they were exactly six, uh, 60 minutes, but maybe in the 50s. Like, what are we doing here? Like, I, I think it's great. This was, you know, worst ending to any show I've ever seen, by the way. But one of the best shows ever on HBO of all time. There's no question. But are we really taking it? Just go binge the show. You have plenty of time. Watch every one. 25 seconds from an hour? I mean, come on. They deserve better than that. Anyway. All right, that will do it for our show today. Thanks again to Brady Cannon for coming on, Jacob Kamaker, of course. And, of course, thanks to Matthew Waters for being on the show two days in a row with us this week. Also, thanks, of course, to our producer, Sam. I'm Craig Mish. We've got the early line coming up next. And then coast to coast later this afternoon, I'll be back with you tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. for our next edition of Newswire. Until then, remember, it is smarter to be on Sports Grid, And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day here. Have a good one.